What's going on, everybody? It is Monday, April 23rd, and we are back. And yes, I say we. The two-man band is back together again. We've got eight games tonight. The uh, the 6 o'clock Braves game is one, not on the slate, and two, uh, likely to get rained out, last I looked. Um, so we've got you know, a pretty solid slate. Nothing early we have to worry about, so no one has to, to yell at us for covering early slate stuff. But I need to introduce my co-host, Jake Hari. Jake, what's going on? Not much. Uh, just recovering from the weekend. Uh, didn't pay too much attention to baseball. Yeah. But uh, I, I did do some research last night, so not unprepared for you guys. Came, <laughs> came prepared, and this is a good size slate. Eight games, and... A uh, few decent pitching options, one that we'll talk about that will be interesting in um, making his debut, and then um, some studs as well, some stacks I really, really like, that, and one that I think is going to be pretty low-owned, so I'm excited for this slate. It should be a lot of fun. Ooh, I'm anxious to figure out who that is. Oh, okay. you'll, you'll see. You'll okay. see. I can't wait. And, and just go, judging by the run total, I don't think they're going to be super popular, but I, I just don't get the, the run total. I think the pitcher is awful that that mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Okay. I'll guess when we get there. Yeah. Uh, let's start it off. Orioles and Indians. Orioles, 3.5 run implied total. Indians, 4.8. Uh, it's a 64% chance to win for the Indians. Kevin Gaussman going for Baltimore. Carlos Carrasco going for Cleveland. Uh, not going to be anywhere near Gaussman. Um but Carrasco looks really good. Uh, the the top four guys of the day, Cole, Carrasco, Tanaka, and and Gio, all look really nice uh, in different ways depending on sort of how much salary you're looking to spend. But I don't have any problem running uh, Carrasco out there. I'll likely have him in a decent amount of lineups. He's probably my second favorite of the main pitchers today. I'm, I'm anxious to hear where you're landing on these guys because... There's a lot to talk about. Yeah, Carrasco is... I think he's got probably the highest K upside of anyone on the slate tonight. Yeah. Um, this is about as good of a matchup as you can have for someone who's got really good strikeout stuff. Outside of Machado, who's just on fire. Like, he homered twice off Kluber. Was that yesterday or, or Saturday? Um, the Orioles just don't have a ton that I'm really scared of. Uh, they have the highest swinging strike rate, highest O-swing percentage, and second highest... Uh, swing percentage in the MLB this year. Uh, Carrasco's overpriced, I think, a little bit, but he's got like 10K upside here pretty pretty easily, I think. Like, I don't think that's out of the question in, in six or seven innings if he can get there. Um, so I love him here. I, I don't really want to target against him. Um, he's, he's probably my favorite out of Cole, him, and Gio. So... Yeah, I guess it's a little different on DK with Tanaka being a full two thousand dollars yeah. behind Geo, whereas like everybody is sort of bunched up together on Fanduel. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I guess there's a top three on DK. Would you say like he's your favorite of those top three, right? Did he's my favorite that? of the top three. Yeah. Okay, I would agree on DraftKings. Um, yeah, like like. I'll take as much as I can get of him, particularly because I also want as much as I can get of the Indian stack, which hmm. um, I preemptively ran Fantasy Cruncher on FanDuel and DK. Indians are one of the primary stacks on both sites, so I think that they are an excellent option tonight. Mm -hmm. um, the top three guys, again, I've, I think I've written about them in the stacks article for the past couple nights, but... Lindor, Kipnis, and Ramirez, one, two, three, second base, third base, shortstop. Like getting that core in the infield is is great. The pricing's perfect. Um, I love the implied total. Uh, I'm gonna end up having like a really ridiculous amount of Indian stack tonight. I don't love the idea of, of targeting against Gaussman, but when I was going through like individually looking at these hitters, like okay, Lindor can give him trouble, Kipnis can give him trouble. Jose Ramirez could definitely give him trouble. Brantley, like the top six could all give him a lot of trouble. Yeah. So I, I sort of talked myself into the stack. Like I think Gaussman's a really good pitcher. He's just run into some bad matchups. Maybe not a, a really good pitcher. Somewhere in between 
what we've seen this year and towards the end of last year. But um, he's getting a lot of swings out of the zone. His swinging strike rate up over 12. I don't, like I said, I don't love the stack against him, but individually, it it makes sense when you look at all the top six or so hitters in the Cleveland lineup. So I get it. Um, they're not my favorite stack, but I do I do get the the Indian stack, and I don't want to use Gaussman. I I just their pricing on Fanduel is so light right now. Like Kipnis is mm-hmm. thirty three hundred. Just so many potential plate appearances for him. Uh, I can't get enough there. And then I'll probably have like an oddly large amount compared to the field of Tyler Naquin if he plays. He's only twenty two hundred. Um, you know, hits righties really well. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a guy where I can see a lot of the that top half of the order being on base for him through the through the order. So he'll be a guy that I take a flyer on in, in GPPs more so than most, I would guess. Yeah, I like the Naquin call actually quite a bit. Um, twenty eight hundred on DraftKings if you're look if you're looking to complete an Indian stack. And you're paying up at pitcher or something. He makes for a nice filler. Uh, he can definitely hit a home run here. Like he's got huge power against righties. Yeah. So uh, I'm loading up on the Indians. They're the first stack that I wrote about, which is already published. Uh, off to a great start for today. There we go. Uh, but yeah, Indians all the way across the board. I'm in for anybody that shows up. I'm fine. I wouldn't try to exclude anything. Uh, Orioles. I-, I wouldn't have anything here outside of. Like, I'd be cool if Pedro Alvarez showed up as the one guy outside of a, a multiple stacked lineup. Um, 2,500 on FanDuel. Just, I'd take my chances at him going yard. Yeah. I I mean, outside of Machado, I don't think I really like anyone here. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's certainly not stackable. Um, not a lot of one off stuff going on. No. Yeah. I'm not too worried about anything on the Orioles. Just grab whatever you can find from the Indians, in my opinion. Yeah, I can't really disagree there. Yankees and Twins. Um, Yankees 5.2 run implied total. Twins 3.8. 65% chance to win for the Yankees. Masahiro Tanaka uh, going for New York. Jake Odorizzi going for Minnesota. Uh, Tanaka's the best guy in the slate for me. Um on DraftKings, I think it's really obvious that he is just because of how discounted his price is. Uh, Tanaka on FanDuel is still in the middle of the heap with everybody, but I think he grades out as sort of the best option of the bunch. He's the guy that I will likely have the most of on FanDuel. Um, let's hear your Tanaka thoughts. I'm sort of right with you there. Um, and He's 8800 on DraftKings, so just a big price discrepancy. Like, I don't think he has a very great matchup against the Twins. A lot of lefties in here. Yeah. A lot of guys with, with low K rates. Um, near the top, at least, Dozier, Maurer, Rosario. <clears throat> and then Morrison's got some power. And um, But, like, Sano here, if he's not, like, if he doesn't square one up, he's striking out a couple times. Um, and Tanaka's just got nasty, nasty stuff. It's, it's way too cheap for him. He got beat up last start, but... He's been over 10.8 swinging uh, strike percentage in all four of his starts. And if he's getting ahead of guys here, he's he's got the stuff to put all these guys away, even though they don't have big strikeout rates. So I love Tanaka here. Um, he's a minus 200 favorite. Like yeah. uh, He should be chalk here, but it's going to be hard for me to leave him out of my lineup. Yeah, on DK with that eighty-eight hundred dollar price tag, two thousand dollars under Geo, twenty-nine hundred under Carrasco, thirty-eight hundred under Garrett Cole. Like it's it's hard to not take him. Those guys are not appreciably different today. Right. Um. So he's going to be very very popular. Yeah. I'm guessing that whoever pitches the best out of Cole, Carrasco, and Gonzalez is actually going to be like the best play of the bunch because of ownership. Um, Probably, yeah. Like you know, if Geo has a big night and he's dramatically under owned because everybody's on Tanaka or the other two guys, like that's going to be the driving force. But For in, sure. In like a big GPP, I mean. Um, but Tanaka just feels like the safest bet, bet best combination of everything out there. Uh, and then yeah. Odorizzi, neither of us are touching. I'm sure. No, no Odorizzi for me. He's been good this year against Rockies. 
26% hit rate and 8.3% hard hit rate. So a lot better than last year. I know he's made some changes. I think people will um, blindly stack against him because he's a noted reverse splits pitcher. Um, but I think he is better this year, and he's going to be better against righties. <clears throat> I don't really want to use him, but I don't know. There could be some K upside if you if you wanted to get crazy. The problem is you you don't really need him tonight with some of these other options, and especially on DraftKings, like you could fit in a lot of hitters outside of Coors um, for pretty cheap. Wow, he does have like ridiculous reverse splits. For his career, yeah. But this year, like, he's not, like, he's been, like, a true splits pitcher. He's basically had, like, an even amount of plate appearances versus lefties and versus righties for his career. Yeah. Versus lefties, <clears throat> 391 XFIP. Versus righties, 479. <laughs> Almost like a full yeah. run above against righties. Yeah. Uh, makes me kind of like the Yankees more. Yeah, I mean, I... Uh... Like, it, again, like, I think Odorizzi's okay, um, but I could certainly see him getting lit up here. Like, this uh, Yankees lineup is super, super dangerous. Um, they are really expensive, though, so I'd rather pay up for, for Coors or um, even some of the Indians, I think, over the Yankees tonight. But one more stat based on those reverse splits. 9.8% uh, home runs per fly ball versus lefties. 12.4 versus righties. Mm -hmm. That's like, man, that's really a dramatic increase. Um, that's not the sort of thing you want to have running against you when you've got Stan and Judge on the and Sanchez on the opposite side of you. So yeah, this game could get gross in a fa like in a real big hurry for uh, for Odorizzi and the Twins. Like there could be two home runs and four runs on the board as soon as Sanchez is done. Is that bad? Yeah, like, you can definitely see that. I mean, at seven fifteen, this one could be over. Yeah, any pitcher that's near average against this Yankees lineup, if they don't have their stuff, like yeah. if they don't have their A or A minus game, they're gonna get lit up because these guys are gonna make you pay if you make mistakes. Yeah. So five point two run implied total, second highest on the slate, only behind the Rockies. So highest non cores total of the day. Uh, if you're paying up for the Yankees. I don't have a I, – I can't talk you out of that. I think it's a great play. Uh, they are expensive. You know, they're not going to be the most efficient per dollar stack, but it's hard to find a team with bigger upside on the on the entire day than the Yankees. So if you're grabbing Judge, Stanton, Sanchez, um, who else would go well with it? Gregorius. Yeah. He's, I, I, I mean, really don't right. love his price on FanDuel. He's only $100 cheaper on FanDuel than DK, so – it He's 4,800 on FanDuel. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, I would get to him in a stack, you know, two, three, four, yeah. five. You're not going to be, like, super upset about it, but uh, I'm in for the Yankees. There are, yeah. let's see, Cahill. Yeah, like, you know, they'd, they'd probably go well with, like, Cahill, I guess. I assume we're going to talk uh, about him. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about Cahill and... And this guy Bueller, and, yeah. Uh, there are some some cheap options. You could definitely fit in the Yankees. Like, I'm not saying you you can't fit them in, but you could also fit in Tanaka and Carrasco, or Tanaka and Cole, or um, yeah, Tanaka and Geo pretty easily too. There's not a ton to like at the lower end of pitching on FanDuel. That's why I was trying to figure out like what the Yankees would go with, because there is no Walker Bueller on FanDuel. <laughs> yeah, so that's yeah, that's gonna be a lot tougher. Um, did you want to touch on any Twins bats? I assume no. Um, no, I I mean, you could make a case for, like, Dozier here, but I just, I mean, I'm I'm going to end up playing Tanaka, like, 99% sure. Okay. So, I'm, I'm not going to have any Twins bats, but... Neither am I outside of maybe, like, a one-off that just pops yeah. up. Like, I, I won't seek it out. <laughs> yeah, me either. I wouldn't be. All righty. Rangers and A's. Um, Rangers, 4.6 run implied total. A's, 5.1. It's a 55% chance to win for the A's. Matt Moore going for Texas. Trevor Cahill going for Oakland. 
Uh, I like Cahill here uh, a, a decent amount. The Rangers 4.6 run implied total is a little nerve wracking for uh, grabbing a pitcher, but if you need somebody further down, um, he's below average pricing on FanDuel today. Solid ish chance to pick up a win. Um, he would be one of the budget guys that I would be looking for. And then Matt Moore, I would be avoiding like the plague. Yeah, Cahill, a guy that we talked about in his first start, he's just like he's he's got really good strikeout stuff. 15.2% swinging strike rate against the White Sox. He's getting ahead of guys. And if he can get ahead of these, these Rangers, you got a lot of strikeouts in this lineup. DeShields is a K machine. Gallo is a K machine. Uh, Chirinos strikes out about 30% against righties, dating back to last year. Mazzara over 20%. Chu over 20%. It's um, it's definitely a, a dangerous matchup in a dangerous park. Texas, one of the best hitting parks in all of the MLB. Yeah. Um, but for 7K, you don't need him to be perfect. Like, if he gives up a solo shot or two here, and he, he probably will, I wouldn't be expecting another outing like he had in his first start where he was like 5k yeah like if he can get you 17 18 DraftKings points here i think that's perfectly fine for for 7000 and i think he can do it so i like cahill quite a bit tonight okay yeah I'm, he's perfectly fine for me um i don't have any like really strong thoughts one way or the other i do like his pricing on fanduel um being priced down quite a bit he's a guy that i expect to pop up just because Sometimes there's going to be a lot of expensive bats in a stack, and like he'll be the guy to go down to. Um, yeah, and then I just hate Matt Moore, so. <laughs> yeah, he shouldn't have a problem getting run support either. Cahill shouldn't. So maybe that'll make him pitch a little bit better. Like it's always nice to pitch when you, um, your first inning when you got a three zero lead or something like that. And right. I think that's a pretty decent chance that that happens. A's stack looks really nice today. Yeah. Um. They look a little bit better on FanDuel than DK from my first run, but uh, <laughs> Semyon and Piscotti, if they're 1-2, um, just especially Piscotti, 2900 yeah. on FanDuel, it's just a, a super-duper cheap price against a lefty in a big big implied total game. Um, I like everything at the top of the A's lineup, so Semyon, Piscotti, Lowry, uh, Chris Davis, Matt Chapman, um, Olsen's only 3,100. Like, I don't love the lefty-lefty matchup, but if I, that's part of a stack, I'll take my chances. You know, there's a... He could realistically see a righty later on in the game, so I'm fine with that. And Moore gets crushed by lefties, too. Like, he, he's gotten crushed by everyone this year. Over 40% hard hit rate against both righties and lefties this year. He's got a 30% strikeout rate against righties. Matt Moore does this year, but it's it's... Completely not sustainable. Eight point seven percent swinging strike rate. He's been a mirage uh, to this point. And <clears throat> this A's lineup, like outside of maybe the White Sox or the Astros or the Yankees, is probably the worst matchup for him. Just a bunch of bunch of power guys, one through six, even one through seven. Mark Kana, Kana, whatever. Like he's got power too. So my favorite plays here. Well, I love the stack. But if I had to choose one or two guys, it would be Chris Davis and Matt Chapman yeah. batting fourth and fifth. They are the second and third, or first and third most expensive of the stack. But those would be my two favorite, like one off plays. And then Matt Olson, I would not leave him off the stack if I could avoid it. Um, I don't think he'll be heavily owned, but he could definitely crush in this lefty lefty matchup. And like you said, probably going to see a righty at some point with all these righties up near the top of the order for Oakland. Yeah, unless they're loaded um, for Olsen and they bring in a lefty for a very specific mm -hmm. matchup, he's going to see a righty later on in the game. So I'm in for I'm in for some A's. I think they're a really nice stack. These first Me three too. games, like Indians, Yankees, and A's, all have very realistic uh, stacking possibilities. Oh, yeah. I think there's you can make a case for pretty much – a team in all these games to stack, which kind is of. everything. Yeah. I wouldn't stack Giants Nats, but that's about it. Yeah, that's yeah. That might be the one that I that I don't want to stack, but a lot of good hitting tonight. Yeah, and then I I think I need to at least mention this slightly. If Delano DeShields is supposed to hit leadoff 
for the Rangers. He's oddly like an okay option for me on FanDuel. Complete minimum salary. It's rare that you get someone that's the full minimum in the leadoff spot. Rangers still have a 4.6 run implied total. Like he's got some wheels. Um, you know, I can see a decent game out of Shields, and uh, at that price, like you don't really need too much from him to to be happy in the long run. It's not something like I would normally recommend, but you just don't ever really see a two thousand dollar leadoff hitter. And that reminds me. Um, I mean, they'd be sharp to put the Shields up there. I think because if he gets on, he's gonna steal on Cahill. Cahill, um, one of the top five worst pitchers at holding runners over the last four years. Okay. So the Shields definitely some multiple stolen base upside if he can get on. Yeah. It's possible he strikes out three times against Cahill if Cahill's got his stuff. And uh, the Shields is not that great of a hitter, but no. he can get on and can steal bases here. Uh, who else has speed on Texas? Should we talk about Texas bats maybe? Um, we can. They look better on TK than they do on FanDuel. Yeah, and Outside that's just the Shields, who's just you know priced at zero basically. Yeah, like yeah, I mean, Chu it, Mazzara, Gallo. I don't have any problems there. Gallo looks pretty nice. Thirty five hundred Fanduel, thirty eight hundred DK dual eligibility. I, I don't. I wouldn't have a problem running Gallo out there. I like Gallo, Beltre, and Mazzara as the three guys I'd I'd most want in a stack. Cahill yeah. does have a. He's got a whip that's up there. He can get really wild. Allows a lot of stolen bases, like we just talked about. So it is a really, really risky play to play Cahill in a good park. Because if he doesn't have it, he could certainly go negative. But I do I do like him more than I like the Rangers stack. So do I. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't get totally to the Rangers. I wish I did. The 4.6 runs is fine. Like, it's, it's not a, mm-hmm. a move that I would skip out on. But I don't remember them coming up all that often. Nothing near the top on DK. And then the Shields is popping up a little bit on FanDuel. He's going to show up as a one-off a little bit for me, I, okay. I think. And that's fully based on price. You, just, you rarely see that. So, yeah, I, I can get to some uh, unique Ranger stacks. That would be fine with me. I don't have a problem grabbing really anything in this game outside of Matt Moore. <laughs> yeah. No, no Matt Moore for me. No. Alrighty, Astros and Angels. Astros 4.7 run implied total. Angels 3.5, 63% chance to win for the Astros. Garrett Cole going for Houston. Tyler Skaggs uh, going for the Angels. Uh, I'm not going to be on Skaggs at all. I do generally like him a little bit, but this isn't going to be that spot. Um, Cole is just hella expensive $1,100 more expensive than anyone else on FanDuel $900 more expensive than everyone else on DK um, it's a really nice matchup for him very righty heavy at the top of the Angels lineup so I think Cole looks nice I, I have no problem having him I-, I just don't think he's the most efficient dollar for dollar pitcher on the board he could be the highest raw points score yeah. but I-, I like Tanaka like I think Tanaka he has a good chance of getting over 20 plus. Um, I think Carrasco could get up to like 30 in this matchup, and he, like Cole's going to be significantly less owned, I think, than Carrasco than Tanaka. So it makes sense to get some exposure to Cole if you're making multiple lineups because if he's on, we've seen it. He can strike out 10 easily. He's done it a bunch of times this year already. Um, the Angels are a tough matchup. Even though these are all righties, we've got guys like Anderson Simmons and um, Cozart who don't really K that much, so they could get some tough at bats against Cole. But like, I think he's pretty safe in most matchups, and I, I wouldn't be scared to use Cole here. It's just a price thing for me. One thing to keep in mind, I'm gonna I'm gonna use your stats here. Angels lowest swinging strike rate yeah. in baseball this year. Nice catch. Yep. Yeah. I've been, I've been keeping it up now on my my other monitor. I've got the big chart of it all. So, Yeah, and that's just something I look at just as like a reference point. All right, does, does this team um, swing and miss a ton? Like I look at their O swing percentage. Do they swing out of the zone? Do they just swing a ton in general? Like for a 12.6K pitcher, you're going to need them to go pretty deep. Yeah. And the Angels are one of the most patient teams. So 
Like Cole could throw 95 pitches in six innings and get pulled. Like you're going to need him to go pretty deep and rack up strikeouts here. And I think he can do it, but I just think that Carrasco or Tanaka or both have a have a better path at success here. Yeah, I'm with you. Um, I'll like I'll have some coal for sure. Uh, I don't have any. There's no major warning signs. A 3.5 run implied total is tied for last today, so yeah. I at least want to follow that a little bit. Cole not expected to give up a ton of runs, but strikeouts might be a little bit harder to come by than they normally would. Mm-hmm. Uh, stack wise. I don't love the pricing of the top of the Astros lineup, but you know how it, it's hard to not like Springer, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Bregman, Marwin Gonzalez against the lefty. So I think the Astros are going to be pretty popular here, and I, I think they should be. They they finally woke up. They had a, f- a few games in a row this weekend when I didn't play as much, <laughs> so I missed out on on the Astros party, but um, the the top three are really expensive. Springer, Altuve, Correa, all over 5K. And then Guriel batting fourth is a guy that I would love a lot in this stack. And then Gaddis in the seven hole, I think, would be the guys that, that I'd be looking to play here. The Astros actually are not my favorite stack here either. Okay. But, like, it's Houston, and there are other spots people will go. People will go to Coors. People will go to the A's. Indians, Yankees, like we've talked about. So I don't think you have to worry about them being like mega chalk, which is nice. Yeah. Uh, speaking of Guriel, yeah, you mentioned liking him. Only 3,000 on FanDuel. Uh, looks oh. like a really nice bat at the heart of the Astros order. I wouldn't yeah. have any problem at all um, using him as a one-off. I'm actually going to check to see how often he shows up. Yeah, uh, Guriel's a stud. Apparently which... not at all, which is not what I would have expected. Got to get him in there. Kind of makes me feel like I didn't add him or like I accidentally unselected. No, the Astros are there in a... Yeah, no Astros bats showing up really? in any of my 150 fan duel lines. Are they super expensive? Uh, bit, they're pretty expensive, yeah. A little bit. They don't have the best pricing in the world. Yeah, so you don't have a cheap out there to like that I'm not shocked, so... Does make me want to get to them a little bit. I, I might yeah. need to take a look into that a little bit deeper because they're certainly not a, a faded stack, in my opinion. Right. You're not. Yeah. You're not intentionally fading the Astros, and neither am I. I just yeah. don't know if I'll get to them. I do really like the Coors bats and one other stack. Yeah, the Astros just don't. It, it's hard to combine with the way pitching lines up today to get yep. to pay up for. Springer, Altuve, Correa, and still get, you know, Cole, Carrasco, Tanaka, Gio. So I'm anxious to see how that shakes out. Mm-hmm. Um, Angels, Bats, I don't want any part of anything on the Angels. No, I mean, you can always make a case for Trout, but yeah. not not for me tonight. No, not at all. Alrighty, White Sox and Mariners. White Sox, 4.2 run implied total. Mariners, 5.1. A uh, 59% chance to win for the Mariners, which is kind of amazing given who's on the hill. Uh, Miguel Gonzalez going for Chicago. Mike Leak going for Seattle and a monster favorite. Um, I guess like Leak is mildly in play as a punt pitcher on FanDuel, but I can't imagine wanting to use either of these guys. Yeah, Leak. This so the White Sox are the stack that I think is going to be pretty low owned. And it's because of that 4.2 total, because they're an underdog to Mike Leak. Um, Leak's just been getting hammered by righties this year. 57% hard hit rate against righties. He's still in the top five or six for average exit velocity against righties for both handed pitchers. So he's up there with like some of the worst lefties, just getting pounded by righties. And the White Sox bats, like Abisel Garcia is 3K, Davidson is 3,700. Wellington Castillo for 3100 These guys can all hit righties really well. And then you've got Moncada and Delmonico mixed in there. So I love the White Sox stack. Probably my favorite dollar-for-dollar dollar stack of the night on DraftKings. Wow. Um, yeah. I, I, think I wouldn't, I wouldn't have landed on the White Sox. <laughs> yeah. I, I think Leak's awful. The only concern here really is the weather. It's like 50 degrees about. A little bit of wind blowing out to right, which is fine. Um, 
I just think it's going to be really low owned. And when they're going against a guy who can't miss bats and who's getting pounded, um, it, it's a lot of right. So people won't be on that. The White Sox here, I think leak is pretty awful. Interesting. Um, I don't have a, well, you're all zoomed in right now on the camera. It's been doing oh. this kind of, uh, regular. Oh, I saw, yeah, I was doing that with Chris on the live stream I saw. And I can't figure out how to make it stop doing that. Now I really can't figure out how to make it stop. There we go. <laughs> we'll figure it out. No, it's back. This is horseshit. It's all right. I don't get it. Anyway, oh, now every time I click into the Excel sheet, it zooms in on you. Alrighty. I think we're good. Anyway, I can't believe you got to the White Sox stack. That's not one I would have expected, but it makes <laughs> sense given who's on the hill for Seattle. Um, pricing's pretty good for the White Sox on DK. Uh, I'd have no problem with Moncada, Garcia, Delmonico, Abreu. Um, you know, you can bring Matt Davidson along for the ride there. Uh, they're, not a, they're not a stack that I'll probably end up with just because of their implied total and sort of where everything else is. I'm mm -hmm. actually a big fan of a Mariners stack tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, and I have been for the past couple days, too. I really like them whatever day. I guess it was probably Saturday. Whatever day they were obviously going to get rained out. I just I didn't even add them to the crunch. <laughs> um, so for me, my focus would be Mariners anywhere in the top seven, really. Uh, Gordon, Segura, Cano, Cruz, Seager, Hanniger, Vogelbach. I'm in for all of that stuff. I think Seager is uh, one of the better plays of the day. Great implied total. Miguel Gonzalez doesn't really miss any bats. You know, Seager hitting in the five hole should have guys on for the entire game. Um, only 3,100 on FanDuel in a righty-lefty matchup against the guy with a projected 553 FIP. I can't get enough there. So him and Cano... Uh, just look great, but Seager's price on FanDuel is so preposterously low that I can't get enough. Cano and Seager, uh, I especially love in this matchup. Miguel Gonzalez, like you said, just another one that can't miss bats. Uh, Hanniger has been crushing. Uh, Nelson Cruz has been crushing, so I really like that three through six. I think they're going to be really popular, and I mean, they're hitting in the same weather as the White Sox, and the White Sox even have as much or more power than the Mariners. They probably have more power than the Mariners. Um, so I do I do really like both sides of this game. I think I just want the, the lower own side. So I can't I can't say anything bad about the Mariners stack here at all. It's a really good run total and they've got some really good hitters in the middle of that lineup. Turns out I'm gonna have to pay attention to the White Sox Mariners games for reasons I didn't expect. Yeah. Game stack. Yeah. I'm anxious now. I'm anxious to watch this one. Yeah, Mariners for me are going to be in a decent amount of stacks on FanDuel. I just don't get the run. Like, I don't get why Mike Leak is a sizable favorite on the road here. I, I don't know what the White Sox record is. I'm assuming it's not very good. But this just, this is like an awful matchup for him. White Sox sitting at a crisp 4-14. Four and 14. That's why. Okay. <laughs> and... The Mariners' bullpen is, like, average, so I even looked that up. They're not anything special in terms of, like, whip and hard hit percentage and stuff. So just another uh, reason to stack up the White Sox tonight. Yeah, uh, White Sox not <laughs> so great so far this season. No. They had that huge opening day, and then they, they haven't done a ton, but well, I think they get back on track. That's for sure. Yeah. And I like pairing them, like, I want to use one of these other stacks to, and name these other, like, chalky stacks, like the Rockies or Astros or um, the A's. And I think they they make it fit really well. So, Look, I don't have a problem with it at all. It all makes sense on paper. I'm very surprised that the gap between the Mariners and the White Sox is as big as it is in a game yeah. that's in Chicago. I, I don't get it either. So, All righty. Rockies and Padres, this one will be popular. 5.8 run implied total for the Rockies. 4.7 for the Padres. Rockies with the biggest implied total on the board. Surprise, surprise. Um, they're going to be a very popular stack. Chad Bettis going for Colorado. 61% chance to win. Brian Mitchell going for the Padres. 
Uh, we don't even need to mention pitching today. Um, I want to stack this whole game of hitters, particularly the Padres on FanDuel, where they are priced as if no one even heard of Colorado. FanDuel messed up the the pricing again. Didn't San Diego just played in Coors and they were they had like a bunch of guys minimum priced and yeah. it looks like they still haven't fixed it. Yeah, Margot hitting projected to hit leadoff twenty four hundred. Uh, one of the best plays on the board just from a pricing standpoint in course. Um, both teams look amazing. Uh, Rockies and Padres. Padres are a much better stack on FanDuel tonight than than they are on DK. They made the uh, both teams made my spotlight hitters list or spotlight stacks yeah. list, list rather. Um, doing the weird <clears throat> zoom in thing again, which is fun. Anyway, uh, I can't get enough of these guys. They they show up in abundance on FanDuel. The Rocky stack looks great. Uh, the Padre stack looks great. I'm going to have a lot of just full game stacks of this. Um, I assume you're pretty much in the same boat with me. Yeah, Colorado, probably my favorite dollar-for-dollar dollar stack. Yeah. The Brian Mitchell can't miss any bats no. under 5% swinging strike rate again last start, so that makes all four of his starts under 5%. Just look at his K rates. It's it's laughable. He can't even limit hard contact either. And this is outside of Coors. And now his, his pitches aren't going to break as much. Um, just if you can't miss bats in, in Coors, you are, you're dead. Or you're just going to have a bunch of line drive, warning track outs, and stuff like that. But like they're gonna, Colorado's going to be making contact here. And they're not even that expensive. Story and Ionetta. Ionetta is 3,500, probably my favorite catcher on the night. Yeah. Batting second, if, he, if he's in somewhere in the top five or six. Yeah, I've got him at David, fifth right now, but either okay. way. Yeah, e yeah, either way. I mean, if he's as long as he's not batting eighth or something, then I still love him. David Dahl, if he's in the lineup for 2,800, uh, lefty-righty matchup. Trevor Story for 4,300, I even play him against a righty. I usually only play him against lefties, but... Brian Mitchell is not going to make you miss too often. Nope. Nolan Arenado for 5,200. Charlie Blackman, probably my favorite play of the entire slate. Um, but you got to pay for it. He's 5,700 on DraftKings. I love LeMahieu leading off. I just I want every single bit of these Rockies. Same. Um, I'll have a ton of them. They look a little bit better on DraftKings because you, you can potentially work a doll in. He's not available on FanDuel today, but 2,800 on on DK in course, you just take that. It doesn't yeah. matter where he's at in the lineup in that scenario. Um, I'll have a ton of Rockies. I can hop to it now just to to give everybody the peek. But DK is dominated at the top of the the crunch by Rockies, and then uh, just slightly down further, they start working their way into Fanduel. Uh, but San Diego is the priority on Fanduel for me. Margot and Myers. Myers made the spotlight hitters list. Thirty-one hundred. You just these guys are just criminally underpriced for playing in Colorado. They're going to be very heavily owned on FanDuel. So Margot, Myers, Hosmer, Perella. You know, like normally I wouldn't say make sure you scoop up Freddie Galvis, but he's a twenty-nine hundred dollar shortstop in cores as part of a super low owned stack. I'd probably just focus on one, two, three, four here. Um, the, my only concern is that you're getting three outfielders, but a Padres stack with an Indian stack fits together perfectly since you get okay. second, third, and short from um, from the Indians at the top, and then you can have three outfielders from the Padres making under $10,000 combined. It's just, it's a real nasty stack. <laughs> Yeah, no no problems with the Padres either. Uh, you know why? Did I miss something on Cordero? Is he Why isn't he projected to play? Have you uh, heard anything? No. Okay, because he's been leading off, hasn't he? Uh, they dropped him a day or two ago. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't even see him in the lineup I'm looking at or the one that you have up. So I don't know if he's just projected to get a day off or... What's going on? But if he was leading off here, I would love him. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Did you see the ball he hit? Like, Longest was it last week? Or, yeah, five hundred feet or something. 
I want to see. Like just, it was just a rocket. Uh, I won't get to this in time. Yeah, the, yeah, he didn't lead off in his most recent game. I think they had him hitting second. Oh, that, I mean, if he's somewhere in the top half of the lineup, then. I just thought it was weird that he wasn't in the projected lineup. I agree. Yeah, if he's in there, uh, you're going to want to get him as a lefty-righty bat. And I assume he's priced at something stupid on FanDuel. Let me check. Uh, 3000 So, yeah. Um, 3900 on draft. He'll fit in very nicely. Yeah. You're going to want some Padres if you're on FanDuel and some Rockies. Uh, you're gonna want just a lot of this game. There's, there's, it's hard to talk about it in any other way. Everybody knows that it's Colorado, but it's the best spot to get runs today. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anybody I wanted to touch on, but I guess it's, I just wanted to mention Dahl on DK. I mentioned him in the stacks article, but yeah, I think that's probably it. Do you have anything else here? No, I love both sides with a lean towards Colorado. Agreed. Dodgers and Marlins. Dodgers five run implied total. Marlins three point five. Sixty five percent chance to win for the Dodgers. Walker Bueller making his debut um, for LA, and then uh, Harlan Garcia going for the Marlins. No Bueller on Fanduel, unfortunately, but he is the budget play of the day on DraftKings. He's going to be very popular from everything that I've been reading. Uh, 20-something ranked-ish prospect on fan graphs. Big-time fastball. Curveball-slider combo. Um, yeah, he's just a you know former first-round draft pick for the Dodgers in 2015. So i got to keep an eye on. Uh, they've got a, an abundance of riches right now, and I, I can't imagine not having him as one of my pitchers on DraftKings. Yeah, he looks like um, a really good pitcher. Like, 90... Eight mile an hour fastball. It looks like, uh, yeah, that's usually going to translate well if you can control it. I'm assuming he's a pretty good prospect. I don't know a ton about him, but just looking over what he's done so far this year, he hasn't gone over five innings in any of his last three outings in Triple A. So Dave Roberts is your manager. He's a guy who's got a quick hook. Like if he's at 75 pitches after four, he could come out even if like if. His spot comes up in the order. He could easily get pulled. So it might be a little bit frustrating, but if he can go five innings here, um, he's probably going to pay off the $6,200 price tag on DraftKings. Yeah. So I think I prefer Cahill over him, at least at this point, um, and paying up a little bit more, a little bit less ownership. But, I mean, I can't argue against Walker Bueller. It, it seems like a really good spot. He's heavily favored. And he's a good prospect. So, this draft had a really nice first round. I'm well, just taking that? a look at it now because I was looking up Walker Bueller. But Dansby Swanson, Bregman, uh, Ben Intendi, Ian Happ. Um, now Walker Bueller. You know, the, there some go. other guys that were like Brady Aiken got drafted for the second time by the Indians. You know, first round or first pick in the draft the year before that. Uh, just a really loaded first round that you don't normally see. Yeah. Crazy. Anyway, uh, I like Walker Bueller a lot. I would take him on FanDuel if I could, but I can't. So uh, take him on DraftKings. Make up for it for me. From a stack perspective, uh, I'm in for some Dodgers. Uh, Chris Taylor, 2,700 on FanDuel leading off. Looks great. Uh you know, Seager in a lefty-lefty matchup might be a little bit under-owned. Uh, 3300 on on FanDuel is a criminally low price. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm good for Hernandez and Kemp. Um, I don't normally like Cody Bellinger in this scenario, but I don't have any issues with a Dodger stack. And particularly Taylor, Seager, Hernandez, and Kemp, um, they're like a budget stack for a team with a five-run implied total. It's kind of weird. Yeah, Kike, Hernandez, and Taylor, I think, are my two favorites for L.A. And since I've just mentioned all these other stacks, I don't think I'll get to L.A. Not a great hitter's park, um, but they can certainly do damage at home against Harlan Garcia, who 
it's been underwhelming in his first two starts. Not, I don't see anything special here, like anything that we should be worried about in terms of targeting against him. Nope. So it's really those those two righties, and then Kemp. Puig doesn't or hasn't hit righties or lefties as well as you'd think he would, but um, you could certainly throw him in there too. And then if you want to play Seager or Bellinger, Seager hits lefties really, really well his entire career. So that would be the lefty I'd want in there. Um, but yeah, no no issues with the Dodgers stack. Uh, yeah, it's I, Taylor, 2,700. Seager, 33. Hernandez, 25. Kemp, 25. Oh. Like, this pricing on FanDuel is ridiculous for this total and how bad the Marlins are. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't understand that. Like Taylor should never be under three thousand leading off. Um, TK should never be under three thousand against the lefty. He hits. He's always hit lefties really well. Kemp twenty five hundred against the yeah, lefty tonight. I don't. Yeah, I don't understand it. Amazing. Is it because they just went up against? Well, no. Was that Scherzer a couple nights ago? And they just never went back up. But it must be. FanDuel's really dropping the ball. No no Bueller. Um, no Bueller's a bummer. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, grab some Dodgers. Don't touch the Marlins. <laughs> yeah. Final game of the night, Giants and Nats. This one won't be very popular. <laughs> Chris Stratton going for the Giants. Uh, Gio Gonzalez going for the Nats. 52% chance to win for the Nats. 3.7 run implied total. Uh, for San Francisco, 3.8 for Washington. Um, I like Geo here. He's going to get some ownership for me just because of his price point. Nothing crazy. Uh, I don't really care too much about the Giants lineup, so I have no problem going that direction. Um, Geo obviously can miss some bats. Uh, I don't think that I would touch any part of Stratton, although he grades out as a decent uh, value play on FanDuel. It's just this implied total is not that appealing. So for me, I'm only looking at Geo really, and I don't have a ton of interest in uh, any bats in this game. Um, where, what are you thinking here? Yeah, really, I want to avoid this game altogether outside of Bryce Harper, who we obviously know has huge power, Stratton. Um, he's had a couple nice outings in a row, seven innings pitched in both of them with four and eight Ks. If you just look at the game logs, but I, I think some people will talk themselves into Stratton, and I'd much rather have Cahill or Bueller. So no Stratton for me. Uh, this is a one of the worst hitters parks in all the MLB. So I get the Gio Gonzalez play. I love targeting the Giants as much as the next guy, but um, I want guys that strike out a little bit more than what Gio has shown. So, honestly, it's just Bryce for me here. I mean, that makes sense. I'm hoping that Geo can pick up some strikeouts. Um, I'd be fine with Bryce in a one-off. Uh, I'd be fine with Matt Adams as a one-off, uh, particularly on Fan FanDuel where he's only $100 above the minimum. You know? Oh, yeah, I don't mind that. Take, worth a shot at a home run. He's got some For power. sure, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's just an underwhelming game with an underwhelming total. Agreed. So I mentioned I had already done the crunches. Uh, that way we can save a little bit of time. On FanDuel, it's a lot of uh, Padres and Indian stacks. So basically every combination you can get of those guys mm -hmm. are coming together. Lots of Carrasco, lots of Tanaka, and then a minimal amount of uh, Gonzalez and Cole. It really not dropping down. It's very much sticking to those... Uh, those top four guys but i'm gonna end up with a lot of indians and a lot of padres here and then the a's are probably like the third most popular stack for me um it'll usually shift itself a little bit more as the lines uh, normalize a bit it's always a little bit wider of a spread in the morning but mm -hmm. padres and indians look great for me and then on dk it's rockies and indians as the two big ones uh, rockies just coming up overwhelmingly um Lots of Tanaka, lots of Bueller, lots of Carrasco, and then the rest of it is all just trickles of Cahill, Stratton, Cole, Geo, Skaggs. Um, but 
Rockies, Indians, Yankees on DraftKings seems to be the direction to go. Yeah, I I like them all. Uh, I would I would get the White Sox in there if they were me, because make for a little bit different lineup construction. You might even be able to go, and I, I haven't tried this yet, but you might even be able to go Cole and Tanaka or maybe even Carrasco and get in a full White Sox stack and still get some other bats you like. You said Cole and Tanaka? You could do, yeah, you could probably do Cole, Tanaka, or Carrasco. You could definitely do Carrasco, Tanaka. Let's do Cole, Tanaka. And you said you wanted to do a, uh, a White, White Sox stack. Yeah, you let's could look, easily. Let's look at it. Um, let's remove everybody here and pick just the White Sox. We'll see what sort of like the top 20 you, look like. You could five-man stack it, too. Ah, I forgot to bump that up. Let's check it out. Let's see what... Uh, oh, there's only three options here for Tanaka, really? Cole, and a five-man stack. Okay. Castillo, Avisel. Oh, that's fitting in DD. Oh, okay, so it went 5-3. Yeah. So you could do... Tanaka, Cole. Oh, there. What are you looking for here? Yeah, so maybe. What am I looking for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, what is anything jumping out at you there? Well, the the first one with Tanaka, Cole, and then Castillo, Abreu, Mancada, Abisel Garcia, Nicky Delmonico, and then you've got a three man Yankee stack too. Yeah, which is pretty nice. Uh, I, mean, I don't hate that can, one bit. Yeah. It can definitely be done. Maybe Carrasco and Tanaka might give you a little bit better options, but um, yeah, I just like to play around with with lineups in the morning and just get my initial thoughts and see what sort of fits together and where the chalk's going to be. So I like when you run this. It helps me figure out what the chalk lineup construction is going to be like, at least, or what it might look like. Here's some... Uh... There's one with Tanaka, Carrasco. You get one, two, three, four, five from the White Sox with Lindor, oh, Ramirez, and Naquin. Yeah, I like that. I'm gonna save that one for you. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're gonna take down the uh, whatever tournament you enter with that. So yeah, I'm gonna play DraftKings as well tonight. So okay, I'm ready to do it. There are only two basketball games. Um, I don't have much to talk about there. We'll touch on it in the live stream. Did yeah, a, only two uh, hockey games. Did a spontaneous Saturday morning live stream. And, uh, talked a little NBA for like a half hour and while I enjoyed some coffee. There you go. It was fun. Uh, <clears> do you have <throat> anything else you want to touch on here? What's hockey looking like tonight? Two games. So baseball rules tonight. Yeah. But I will have the stacks and the spotlight plays for hockey. Uh, it's a lot of the same names if you've looked at it the last few days. So I promise it, it'll be different. But we've got the same teams going up against each other for six games now. Yeah. Um, Ovechkin's a good play if you don't know anything about hockey. Just you can plug in Ovechkin tonight. Uh, pretty much the whole series. How long? So has, how long have him and Crosby been in the league? Um, eleven, twelve years. I can, I can look it up quick. But is, I'll take your word they've, for it. They've been in the league for quite a while. Yeah, it's. I just feel like. I feel like Ovechkin's been playing forever, and I feel like he's going to play for 20 more years like Yarmir Yager. Yeah, he's he's still in pretty much peak form. So he's a terrifying human being. Yeah, like I don't I don't mess around with hockey all that much. You know, I know I know the high end, and just seeing him is terrifying to me. Hearing yeah. his name. Like, he sounds like he should be a UFC fighter. He sounds like he would kill somebody with his bare hands. Uh, he's just a real real scary guy to me. Uh, hockey guys in general. Oh, yeah. There's there's some uh, some guys I wouldn't want to get too close to. The difference between a hockey player and a baseball player is so dramatic <laughs> from like yeah. a physical standpoint. Outside of, like, guys like Aaron Judge. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. Uh, if you have any questions for us throughout the day, feel free to hit us up on Twitter. Um, go to at on Twitter. It's at Josh Engelman, at Jake Hari, 
at awesomeo underscore com. That's A W E S E M O underscore C O M. Uh, com for the website. Uh, sign up for premium. Uh, we just got a lot of a lot of stuff going on, and more and more coming as the NBA playoffs sort of slink off to a time where it's harder to play, and the NHL playoffs sort of slink off to where it's harder to play. We're going to be very, very focused on baseball. We've got a lot of golf content. We're going to start looking into um, other sports as well. Uh, we're growing. Growing like a weed here. So yeah. Come join in. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add? No. Have fun. <clears throat> Enjoy this baseball slate. Maybe j- degen some uh, two-game NHL, two-game NBA tonight. There you go. And uh, hopefully make some money tonight. That's the plan. Best of luck, everybody. Like and subscribe if this was good for you. And uh, we will talk to you again tomorrow. Adios.